My name is Richard Alfaro. I am a postdoctoral research associate at Los Alamos National Lab. I work with the geophysics group here um, and uh, work on a lot of different uh, problems related to seismology. So, um, <laughs> you know, I, I originally chose geology and I kind of fell into seismology by accident. Um, I was lucky enough to get a what's called a Keck geology uh, internship while I was an undergraduate at the University of Texas at El Paso. And that um, undergraduate research opportunity took me to Costa Rica, where I met a very vibrant and <laughs> exciting seismologist. Um, he is the head of um, Costa Rica's what Oviscori Una, which is their uh, national um, seismic observatory. And he, uh, on, on, as a part of that undergraduate research opportunity, he was deploying seismometers on the coast of uh, Costa Rica's Nicoya Peninsula. And I, I don't know, I just got really excited about it. You know, there was, um, I got to see a lot of cool instrumentation. They still had, um, back then they had, they still had the machines that would actually record um, uh, the waveforms on paper on the, on the seismic drums and stuff. So, you know, it was just really exciting seeing all that stuff. And um, I saw, he, you know, he was also Hispanic as I was, you know, and I was, you know, kind of expired to uh, just, explore what seismology was and it just kind of went from there um, and he actually introduced me to the person that became my um, doctoral um, advisor um, Aaron Velasco at the University of Texas El Paso because they had gone to graduate school together so that's kind of how I ended up in seismology um, but I, another part that attracted me to it was um, I would say the computer science -y aspect of it, you know. So I, I research a couple of different things um, at, as a part of my postdoc at the lab. Um, I originally came here to work on induced seismicity. So that's just earthquakes caused by human activity, whether it be related to the oil and gas industry or mining and other things. Um, so I do work on induced seismicity and that's something that's of major interest to me. Another thing that I work on um, that's always been a passion of mine is looking at uh, triggered earthquakes, which are earthquakes that can be triggered uh, uh, via stress changes from other earthquakes, whether they be um, distant earthquakes um, or local earthquakes. Um, and I also am heavily involved in um, the um, nuclear test ban treaty monitoring side of uh, seismology. So that's uh, trying to verify, you know, if other countries are testing uh, nuclear weapons uh, using seismology. So we use waveforms that are recorded at different seismometers around the world to, to um, essentially discriminate whether we're, we're recording uh, events that are earthquakes or explosions. Well, you know, I, I want to say um, the major turning, turning point for me was that uh, undergraduate research opportunity. Um, so that's really what got me involved in seismology in the first place. But what um, convinced me to, to go to grad school was um, uh, getting in contact with uh, Aaron Velasco. So he ended up being my dissertation um, mentor and you know, he, he was also Hispanic. And so that was a big part of it for me. Um, you know, I, I, I saw him and it was easy to relate. Um, so, um, and, and he gave me, you know, a really good opportunity to pursue um, a graduate degree. Um, and I guess, you know, I, I wasn't that keen on necessarily going to graduate school at first, but he, you know, he, he took a lot of time to sort of convince me that it was worthwhile. And um, I think it was having him as a mentor that was a, a major 
uh, really a major um, influence um, convincing me to go. And also, you know, the, the whole coding aspect of things was, was another contributor. Um, um, you know, I, I think the best advice if, if you're currently an undergraduate right now is to seek a mentor, um, you know, look for things that you're interested in or find someone that you think, um, uh, you know, is someone whose research you think is interesting, um, get in contact with them, even, even if it's through like a cold email, you know, just send them an email, say, I'm interested. I'd like to talk to you. And I think that's the best way to sort of go forward um, from my experience. For me, it's always just sort of mapping out an idea. And if you're getting stuck, <laughs> try to Google things. Um, I, there, there are plenty of helpful, you know, books to walk you through coding type things. But um, I guess don't be afraid if you're stuck to reach out to someone that is actually good <laughs> at coding and just ask them for their advice or to just, you know, ask a question. Um, but if there are any students that end up watching this and, you know, would like some advice or would have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm always, uh, open to, to questions or if you just want advice. Mm -hmm.